I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and this video will cover all of the 31 magazines available in Dead Rising 2 off the record with information on where to get them, what they do, and their practical applications. This will contain some minor spoilers for a few Psychopath and Scoop events. Most of the magazines are available from the various bookstores in Fortune City, but some require being unlocked through main story progression or optional Scoop events. The best way to break these 31 magazines down is by organizing them into types. Weapon durability bonuses, vehicle durability bonuses, health bonuses, bargaining bonuses, gambling bonuses, weapon PP boosters, zombie killing bonuses, survivor related bonuses, and finally a couple of miscellaneous bonuses. Since Frank's a photojournalist, new to off the record are the photography boosting books. Speaking of new to off the record, the vast majority of these magazines are one-to-one -one ripped from Dead Rising 2. Just like how off the record is basically an arranged mode of Dead Rising 2, the magazine's locations have been shuffled. They ain't in the same place this time. I'll also be using the term book and magazine interchangeably. Don't worry too much about it. First up are the weapon buffing magazines. These function exactly like in Dead Rising 1 and Dead Rising 2, where each book gives you three times durability. A few of these books can be stacked together giving multiplicative bonuses. Two books will give you three times three for nine times durability, and the rare three book will give you three times three times three for 27 times durability. This only applies to weapons listed on every single book. We'll go through every book in this category and where to get them before talking about the practical applications as a whole. Let's start in alphabetical order. The Amusement Magazine is found in Baron Von Brothaus in the Yucatan Casino. This increases the durability of toys by three times. Just a note, but toys aren't viable weapons. They're garbage. The Blades Magazine is found in Royal Flush Plaza at the newsstand yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The Blades magazine is actually pretty good as it gives edged weapons three times durability, and thankfully, you can grab it right at the start of the game, unlike Dead Rising 2. The Building magazine is found in the South Plaza on some scaffolding. It's actually pretty well hidden, but you have to climb up this area and then run to the magazine. The Building magazine gives construction items three times durability. The Domestic magazine is found in the Fortune City Hotel on a table near the couches. The domestic magazine will make furniture items have three times durability. The Fortune City Hotel is locked in 72 hour mode until you start the case alive on location, but you can pick it up whenever you like in sandbox mode. The games magazine is found in Rags Mags, formerly Ragazines on the second level of Royal Flush Plaza. The games magazine increases the durability of entertainment items by three times. Next up is the skateboarding magazine. This is found in Ultimate Playhouse in the Palisades Mall. This is on the ground in front of the register. The skateboard magazine lets you do a sick trick and increases skateboard durability by three times. Finally is the sports magazine. This is also found in Rags Mags on the second level of Royal Flush Plaza. The sports magazine increases the durability of sporting goods by three times. Just like in Dead Rising 2, I'll cut to the chase here. Every single one of these weapon durability books has virtually no practical applications throughout off the record. And it's for one simple reason, and that reason is that combo weapons exist. Combo weapons deal more damage, provide PP bonuses, and generally have stronger durability compared to standard weapons. The absolute best combo weapons like knife gloves, the spiked bat, and pull weapon are easy to make, have good crowd clearing, are good for beating psychopaths, and they give you PP for every single zombie kill. These PP gains on an individual level are small, but throughout the course of the game, these small bonuses will lead to real, tangible levels. There's also just not really a downside to using combo weapons. Maintenance rooms are all over the place, and it's really easy to restock. You might think the Blades magazines would apply to the pull weapon or knife gloves, or maybe sports applies to weapons like the spiked bat. Unfortunately, none of these books that grant durability bonuses apply to combo weapons. They only apply to standard weapons. That means if you're using combo weapons, and you should be, then none of these books hold any real value. If you're playing Dead Rising 2 off the record, use combo weapons. The books only have any real usage before you get access to maintenance rooms. This period of time is so short that you can easily get by without using books for that really brief period of time. The instant maintenance rooms come into play, regular weapons drop down to dumpster tier. 
combo weapons are simply that much better. The skateboarding magazine is the only one with reasonable practical applications. It has some synergy with the sports magazine to make your skateboards far more durable. Skateboards in Dead Rising 2 are more durable than in Dead Rising, but you're still likely better off just grabbing a few skateboards instead of the books and dodging zombies. I've played Dead Rising, Dead Rising 2, and Dead Rising 2 off the record a lot, and I almost never touch skateboards. So your mileage is going to vary. The next set of durability boosting books are significantly better and more useful, but only when you're achievement hunting. These are focused on vehicles. The driving magazine increases four-wheeled vehicle durability by three times. This mostly just applies to the 4x4 utility cards around the mall, but it should also apply to the unlockable SUV and the sports car. The driving magazine is extremely well hidden this time around. It's on the sign for Paradise Platinum screens on the Platinum Strip. You'll have to go the long way around and climb a vending machine and jump over a few roofs to get to it. The driving magazine's main practical purpose is for the scaffolding shuffle challenge in the South Plaza. This challenge is made significantly easier when you use the driving magazine to buff up the durability of your utility cart. Without the magazine, your cart will just not make it. But with it, you'll make it all the way to the statue resulting in an easy one of the challenge. If you can make these awkward jumps, of course. This also does work in the co-op equivalent challenge as well. You should definitely go out of your way to pick this magazine up before starting this challenge. The bike magazine would be significantly more useful this time around, but it requires you to beat both Chuck and the scoop People Like Us to unlock the bike trailer, as well as activate the case The Last Stand to get maximum value out of it in 72 hour mode. The Last Stand is very late into 72 hour mode. Thankfully, however, this area and the bike trailer are always unlocked in sandbox mode. If you thought 72,000 zombie kills was bad, we'll go ahead and add another 28,000 to that for a whopping 100,000 kills required for the six digits achievement. This is where I get to quote the angry video game nerd and scream, what were they thinking? <laughs> You have to farm the 100,000 kills in sandbox mode. It's just way too high a number to feasibly get it in 72 hour mode. Thankfully, you need a minimum of 10,000 kills to unlock all the sandbox mode challenges anyways. What's 10 times that amount between friends? If you want to get six digits the legitimate way, you can use the slice cycle, just like in Dead Rising 2. You'll have to deal with various psychopaths on the strip at varying times. Chuck and the snipers will spawn in at some point, and you may also have to deal with Randy. You can opt to exclusively use the maintenance tunnels instead, this will let you avoid psychopaths, but it will be slower because the tunnels have terrible zombie density. Regardless, the bikes magazine is a godsend if you plan to do this. That being said, you can use the greatly superior Atlantica Casino Queen Glitch to farm the kills way faster. I strongly recommend using the Queen Glitch. There are more details on that in the Dead Rising 2 All Achievements Guide. And you can take it from me. I'm the speedrun world record holder, despite what the leaderboards may say. The health books are back, and just like the original Dead Rising in Dead Rising 2, they are super lackluster. Health 1 increases your healing from food items by 50%. You can find this in Stan's large print books and magazines on the second level of the Palisades Mall. Health 2 increases your healing from food items by 100%. You can find this in Hungry Joe's Pizzeria in the food court. You'll have to jump onto the counter and then climb onto the fridge. The same logic applies in Off the Record as it did in the first Dead Rising and Dead Rising 2. You could carry one of these health boosting books, or you could carry a second healing item. If you were to pick one, Health 2 is twice as good as Health 1. Health 2 is still extremely lackluster. If you're healing Frank with painkillers, which heal 6 health blocks, you're not going to get any real value out of the health 2 buck until you're in your late 40s to the max level of 50. You're always better off holding onto 2 healing items rather than grabbing this health book. It's just a nuance of the game. Without infinity modes continually draining health and Dead Rising 2 off the record, there's absolutely no reason to ever grab one of these books. Just grab more healing items instead for the same inventory space. The Juice Boost book is in a similar position as the health books. You can find it on the rafters in the Atlantica Casino. You'll have to climb up the giant clam to get onto the rafters. Juice Boost takes up an inventory space, but doubles the duration of mixed juices that Frank drinks. The problem is you can just have two of the same mixed juice in your inventory to get the same duration, minus time spent chugging the second juice, for the same number of inventory space. 
Frank is also a food enjoyer, so he eats way faster than Chuck, so this is a really minor nuance. That being said, Juice Boost actually has a couple of practical applications in Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, but it's not required by any stretch of the imagination. Off the Record Sandbox Mode challenges do actually benefit from making a lot of juices, and the Juice Boost book will improve these juices. Any kind of racing challenge strongly benefits from drinking a Quick Step, Repulse, and Untouchable prior to starting the challenge. Having the Juice Boost magazine will ensure the juice effects stay active for the duration of the challenge. You could also get a lot of value out of Juice Boost while using Zombates, both in 72 hour mode and the two sandbox mode challenges that require them. Zombates will put the attention on Frank while escorting Denise while doing the Alpha vs Omega achievement in 72 hour mode. This should make it easier for you to haul Denise around Fortune City and maximize any potential whoopsies. The new checkpoint system and ability to quickly reload will largely render this obsolete, however. The drinking magazine has the most practical usage. By far the most plentiful healing items are alcohol based in the adult playground of Fortune City. Unfortunately, if Frank drinks too many boozy beverages in rapid succession, he'll get sick, drop whatever he's carrying, and start vomiting. This effect persists for quite some time. The drinking magazine has the most value of any of these healing books. This is exclusively because it negates the extremely negative effect of drinking too much alcohol. It very well could be worth picking up and holding on to. Regardless of your version, in Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, you can get access to the sports fan outfit. This was previously paid DLC in Dead Rising 2. You'll have to wear the entire outfit by picking up the pieces. The face paint is across the lights from Benny Jack's Barbecue Shack in the Americana Casino. The cleats are in Sport Trance in Royal Flush Plaza. The helmet is in the back of Hot Exciterama on the Silver Strip. Finally, the clothes are in Coconut Sports Town. The sports fan outfit looks goofy, but it gives you a speed increase, increased gambling ability, and prevents you from throwing up when drinking too much alcohol. Since you will always have access to the sports fan outfit no matter what version you're playing, this magazine has absolutely no value and you can save yourself the inventory space. You should be wearing the sports fan outfit when playing Dead Rising 2 off the record, even though it's hideous. You will want the sports fan outfit or the drinking magazine specifically when doing the challenge Thirst Quencher in the Atlantica Casino. This will prevent you from throwing up and make it a lot easier to down the 30 drinks required for a gold medal. Obviously, this also applies for the co-op equivalent of Thirst Quencher. You and your buddy should both wear Sports Fan. If your buddy isn't wearing it, you can give your friend the magazine before starting the challenge. Also of note is that even though the Sports Fan outfit prevents you from throwing up, in 72 hour mode you won't be wanting to drink any alcohol for the Pure Wall Memorial Cup achievement. Just keep that in mind. Next up are the Bargaining Magazines. Both of these magazines give you a 10% discount on the prices in pawn shops, and yes, they do stack. Bargaining 1 can be found in Royal Flush Plaza at the newsstand yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You can easily pick this up at the very start of the game. Bargaining 2 is also hidden and only available in 72 hour mode. You'll need to grab the security box key from the maintenance room in Tune Makers. Now head to the Fortune City Bank in the Uranus Zone and open up the security box for the Bargaining 2 magazine. Bargaining 1 and 2 will give you a 20% discount on prices at pawn shops. When you're looking at making a big purchase, like the SUV at $2 million, dropping that down to $1.6 million is going to be extremely appealing. This time around there's no achievement for spending lots of money, so absolutely use the bargaining magazines. In fact, you should make sure to do all of your major purchasing during 72 hour mode to save yourself some pretty hefty cash. The gambling magazines are easily some of the most useful in the game. They increase your gambling ability. This allows you to more easily win slot machines and card games. They are invaluable for amassing huge amounts of cash in Fortune City. You'll want to pick up all three of these magazines when you're generating income. The Gambling One magazine is found in the Swim Bar in the Palisades Mall. It's on the second level right beside the water slide. The Gambling Two magazine is found in Benny Jack's Barbecue Shack. This isn't actually across the lights this time, it's simply sitting on the counter next to the lights. The Gambling 3 magazine is found in the Fortune City Bank in the Uranus Zone. You'll need the security box key from the scaffolding beside the Fortune City Hotel. Since there are no security box keys in sandbox mode, the third gambling magazine is only available in 72 hour mode. It's kind of unfortunate. 
By gathering all three of these books, you'll significantly increase your odds of winning when gambling. You can further increase your odds by wearing all pieces of the sports fan outfit hidden in Fortune City. With three or more gambling skill, you should be able to have a net positive effect when gambling at slot machines. You will still lose quite frequently, but you'll get enough jackpots to overcome losses, and like TK says, win big. During the story, there's two practical applications for these magazines. These are the two poker minigames. One is during the High Rollers, who you'll need to beat at poker to rescue them. You'll need $100,000 for the buy-in, but when you win, you'll get a million bucks for your trouble. This is the single biggest cash generator in the game, but you can just kill them if you want to. The second is during anti-up towards the end of the game. You can play strip poker with some of your rescued survivors in the safe house. This is one of the ways you can get the Proto Man helmet from Jack. The other is by killing him in sandbox mode. Both work fine. Killing him in sandbox mode is way easier. The gambling magazines will generally give you more favorable cards, and it makes these gambling minigames quite a bit easier. That being said, you should absolutely save and abuse that save to make sure you don't ever lose. If you're doing any serious gambling, you should grab the magazines first. If you want to generate huge amounts of cash, bet the maximum amount at the giant pink slot machine in the Slot Ranch Casino. This will take a while, but you'll be able to get enough cash to buy every unlockable here in the quickest amount of time. Unfortunately, you need to do this during 72 hour mode to get the benefits out of all of the gambling magazines. I swear, Capcom Vancouver is always one step forward and two steps back. You can still gamble in sandbox mode, but you'll be at a level 3 gambling versus a level 4 in 72 hour mode. There's nothing stopping you from just ignoring the story and generating cash in 72 hour mode, if that's your thing, and then restarting. The combat magazines increase your PP gains when defeating zombies with combo weapons. Each magazine increases PP gains by 10% and they stack. All three magazines will give you 30% extra PP. The Combat 1 magazine is found at the bar in Lowy Wowy on the Silver Strip. Combat 2 is found in Stan's large print books and magazines on the second level of the Palisades Mall. Combat 3 is found in the Slot Ranch Casino Cashier's Office. This is hidden in the break room. You'll need to have done the cases in 72 hour mode up to run for the money to get this. If you're playing in sandbox mode, this is always open and available. These magazines can have some use, but in general, PP gains from combo weapons aren't going to play any significant role in leveling up quickly. Especially since the most efficient way to level up in Dead Rising 2 is just to go for the 100,000 zombie kills using the Queen Glitch, or by grabbing vodka off the shelf in the food cart. That's another glitch. The combat books were largely lackluster in Dead Rising 2, but they do have some practical applications for various challenges in sandbox mode. There are quite a few challenges that require you to generate as much PP as possible in a limited time frame or under a restriction like only using certain types of weapons. Are the combat books necessary or required? Absolutely not. I have completed all of the challenges without them. Extremely easily, in fact. That being said, you're going to have an easier time with all three of the combat books in your inventory. 30% extra PP is going to make breaking the threshold for golds extremely easy. If you want to be absolutely sure you're going to gold medal a challenge, you can consider the combat books when doing any of these PP challenges. Otherwise, you should just forget that they exist. The zombie killing books increase your PP gains from killing zombies. You'll get 25% extra PP for each book in your inventory. You'll get 500 PP for 50 zombie kills baseline, and with one book that goes up to 625, and the second will take you up to 750. The Horror 1 magazine is found below the Americana Casino. You'll have to head to the underground to get this. This is locked until the case Ticket to Ride in 72 hour mode, but is freely open in sandbox mode. The Horror 2 magazine is found on the scaffolding in Fortune Park, beside the Fortune City Hotel. The two zombie killing magazines are only useful when going for the six digits achievement. They have very limited usefulness otherwise. If you can spare the inventory space, you can quickly snatch up these magazines to level yourself up faster while going for the 100,000 zombie kills. These are definitely worth picking up when doing six digits from a new game, as you can easily push yourself to level 50 in just over an hour. I should know. As of publishing this video, I'm the current level max champion for Dead Rising 2 off the record on both PC and console. See how long that lasts. Grab these magazines when going for zombie kills, whether you're doing six digits legitimately with the slice cycle, or when you're being a filthy cheater by using the Atlantica Casino Queen Glitch. It goes without saying, but if you're already level 50, these hold absolutely no value. You can forget that they exist once you hit level 50. 
The next set of magazines are related to survivor bonuses and buffing survivors. The leadership magazine can be picked up from Rags Mags on the second level of Royal Flush Plaza at any time. Unlike Dead Rising's brainwashing tips, the leadership magazine has a very defined behavior. This magazine improves survivors that have some kind of injury or disability. This is a very specific set of survivors, like Jared or Esther. Usually this means that if a survivor is slow and needs a shoulder, or needs to be carried, they will behave like normal survivors. Notably, this book doesn't work on Tammy the Mermaid. She always needs to be carried, even with the book. The price of going commando. This is an easy pick up and drop off because you're constantly moving through Royal Flush Plaza throughout 72 hour mode. If you know a survivor coming up needs a shoulder or needs to be carried, then you can quickly pick this book up before moving out to get them. It'll make it a little bit easier. That being said, compared to Dead Rising 2, this has a little less use now as a survivor or two has been buffed to not need this magazine anymore. And you don't really need to rescue survivors in Dead Rising 2 off the record anyways since there's no saint achievement. Next up is the Rescue Magazine. This is tucked away in one little duck bingo on the silver strip. You can actually grab this at the start of the game in Dead Rising 2 off the record. You don't need to wait for Becky to open up that door like in Dead Rising 2. The Rescue Magazine provides you with 25% bonus PP for Survivor Join Up and Final Rescue. If you're going for an all Survivors playthrough starting from a level 1 file, this is a no-brainer pickup. You'll level up faster, and that means more damage, survivability, and versatility with more inventory space. It's worth picking up and holding on to this until you've rescued the final survivor. The Playboy from Dead Rising 2 has been replaced by the generic erotic magazine, due to contractual lapses. The erotic magazine can be picked up from a shelf in Hot Exciterama. This magazine is functionally identical, giving you a 10% boost to female survivor related activities. This effect is fairly lackluster, but it is actually required for Richard Kelly's request, Snake in the Grass. You'll need to give Richard the erotic magazine in exchange for 100 bucks. Make sure to wash your hands after. This is required for unlocking the team player achievement. Otherwise, the erotic magazine is pretty lame. I'd totally never look at one of those, and if I did, it would just be for the articles. Obviously, once you're level 50, both the Rescue and Erotic magazines have no value and should not be held in your inventory. If you're not level 50 and doing a Survivor Rescuing playthrough, these can be helpful. The Rescue magazine is obviously more valuable than the Playboy as it applies to all Survivors, not just females, but if you can grab both, you should go for it. Dead Rising 2 off the record also doesn't have an achievement for rescuing all of the survivors. This makes most of these books extremely lackluster. You should only ever do an all survivors playthrough for your own completion's sake. Also, they have absolutely zero value in sandbox mode as you can't do anything with survivors. Since Frank's back in the saddle, you know his camera's back too. There are three new books to buff your photography PP skills. Photography 1 and 2 both provide flat 10% bonus PP from all photographs taken. Photography 1 can be picked up from the first aid station in the Uranus zone. Photography 2 can be picked up from Robsaka Mobile on the second level of the Palisades Mall. The Erotica Photo Magazine will give you 100% bonus PP gains from erotic photographs. You can pick this up off the floor in the men's restroom in Slot Ranch Casino. Gross. Anyone got some hand sanitizer? PP gains from photography are a decent way to level up early. Unfortunately, the best way to level up is, and will always be, just going to kill 100,000 zombies. That should no doubt get you to level 50. And if you're a trophy hunter, you're gonna have to do it anyways. That being said, these magazines do have practical applications in the sandbox mode challenge Shutterbug and its co-op equivalent. The easiest way to complete this challenge is by making a large pile of alien probes. If you have the Photography 1 and 2 books, and especially the Erotica magazine, you can easily gold medal this challenge in one photograph with a big enough pile. You should absolutely snag the Erotica photo magazine before starting this challenge. It makes it completely free. It's easy regardless, but you can ensure a victory with the Erotica photo magazine. The last two magazines are in the miscellaneous category. The Psychos magazine is available to be picked up at any time from Stan's large print books and magazines in the second level of the Palisades Mall. The Psychos magazine is a little too specific to get much use out of. If you know you're gonna fight a psychopath like Slappy, you could easily route in picking it up. Unfortunately, it's just not gonna be too much of a benefit. PP gains are fast and easy in Dead Rising 2 off the record and you don't really need to use this book. 
And of course, once you're level 50, this has absolutely no value regardless. The hand-to-hand -hand magazine is available in the Fortune City Arena security room. This is only available after Becky unlocks the door during the case in security in 72 hour mode. This is freely available in sandbox mode. The hand-to-hand -hand magazine is only useful during a self-imposed no weapons playthrough. Dead Rising 2 off the record has no achievements based on farming hand-to-hand -hand kills. The closest one would be dominoes and that's just knocking down zombies, it's got nothing to do with killing. If you want to have Frank pretend to be a pro wrestler, that's on you, but otherwise this book is significantly less useful than in Dead Rising 2. Unless you're crazy enough to do a no weapons playthrough. But who would bother with that? That's all, and now you're a certified Dead Rising 2 off the record edition magazine expert. Go out there and show everyone that knowledge is power. Thanks for watching everyone, a special shout out to my Patreon supporters, your support goes a long way with helping the channel out. If you like the Dead Rising content, you can check out the Dead Rising playlist. This features multiple video guides on how to rescue all the survivors, and how to get all of the achievements for the Dead Rising series. There even may be a few challenge videos in there coming up soon. Dead Rising 2 off the record, all achievements also just came out, and it's a very satisfying 4 hours, 40 minutes, and 40 seconds. You can also like the video and subscribe for more future Dead Rising content coming. Thanks for watching.